as you guys saw earlier, as a picture came down, that's exactly how I felt. I couldn't keep it together. Wow. I was struggling. I was asking. Wow. Uh, I was asking for uh, for help, like uh, first I mean, with prayer, and I was trying to go that route. And it was God was holding me together, but uh, it was not enough. Okay, let's talk about you. So you you had trouble getting up, right? Yes. You didn't want to get up. I wasn't wanting to get up. What other things did you notice? Like you didn't like, okay, you also talked about not wanting to do the things that you normally liked. You know, you normally enjoy playing different sports, yes. watching sports. You didn't find any any delight in any of those things, right? You were just like, I don't want to do anything. Yes. What else? What else did you, you like? Even, you know, you, uh, you lose, I had a, a, a loss of appetite. Okay. I even lost a... Uh, I mean, it's, I'm embarrassed, but I'm going to be honest, I'm truthful because this is what it's about. Oh, it's what Even it's being about. with my wife, you yeah. Know, yeah. having uh, yeah. intimate moments with my wife was, yes. was becoming difficult. It yeah. was like I wasn't finding, I was feeling so down. There's no energy in you. Yes. You don't have that, 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 uh, that drive yeah. of life yeah. that I've yeah. always had. You know, and I was yeah. like, what's happening? And I always kept saying to myself, I'm getting old. Mm. Well, you know, um, one of the stats that I was actually recently uh, listening to uh, regarding, you know, males and their testosterone levels, you know, males, yes. um, after they're 30, 30 they, start not, dro- they start dropping, the, the levels testosterone, start dropping. Right, exactly. And yes. so a lot of them, you know, are clueless and they don't feel the same, but they don't know why, right? But, you know, that's just another point. Good so, thing that you mentioned that because my chiropractors, when I went to when I went to see him because like I said about my back and I'm, right, I, right. I, I feel okay, like I'm so breaking down. To, he even asked, hey, well, did you take, did you, did you check out your uh, testosterone, testosterone oh, levels? Yeah. I said, you know what? I did it. He goes, depression is uh, one of the symptoms wow. when your testosterone starts dropping. Yeah. And my job is physical. So I'm out working hard every day, wearing myself out. Right. I do landscaping and pool service. Yeah. There's days I'm breaking up concrete. And so if, if there's a man out there, males that are out there uh, that are listening, and that you have physical labor, and uh, yeah, you're gonna go through this. But the great thing is, you, once you understand what you have, that you can make a comeback. I mean, That's it's right. like there's treatment, right. there is there's uh, uh, there's ways to to combat. And we're gonna depression. be talking about just letting everybody know uh, in our part four, part two, right? Part, part, part four, well, yes. part two of depression, yeah, but depression this is like is. our four, yes. part, the part four of this interview series that we're doing uh, with Cheeto. He's going to be talking about uh, what he did, like all yes. those things, and you know, you're gonna. So that's be, in part yes, two. So, that's in, so right now we'll stay tuned. This. Stay tuned. So we're talking about warning signs. You gave us all of these different warning signs. And what happens once once you? I'm going to tell you when I really hit rock hit right bottom. I'm coming back from a, a soccer tournament. I was a uh, I was helping with the soccer team and mission school in Calexico. Right, because I knew you coach. You yes. volunteer coaching. Correct. Coach, yes. Yes. So as we're driving back from a, a tournament, uh, we had been there for like three or four days. Uh, my really good friend uh, Will. Yes. Will Burns. Yes. Uh, we were up there, and, and I kept telling him, you know what, Will. I'm probably coming down with something because my energy level is way like low. I feel like when you're getting sick, you know, when, you right, have a, right, when you're right. feeling like you have a flu, mm-hmm. I had a lot of symptoms of soreness, tired, you know, I didn't get enough sleep. And, and that, that day, it was a Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. We, were, we, were, we, had, uh, we were done. We drove back Saturday morning back home. Mm-hmm. It was a uh, three and a half hour drive. Mm-hmm. So we're driving back home and I'm driving. And this is what scared me. And so when I was driving, I felt like I was there, but I wasn't there. Oh, wow. That is a scary moment. Why? Because your memory or your mind, I'm sorry, your mind is no longer really grasping the, the, the significance of the moment. Wow. It's like you're not connected. Uh-huh. And it's like, and you're thinking, and you start thinking this, and then all of a sudden I look back, and I have like seven kids in my van. And I'm like, these kids are dependent on me, uh-huh. that I keep it together. Yes. That if I roll over because I lost focus or because I'm feeling weird right now, what? I mean, yeah. how bad would these kids have it? Right. I made it home. Wow. I got home. My wife was at church. And uh, she asked me, are you home? I called her. Oh, I told her I didn't know I was home. And she was, oh, you want to come over? We're having potluck. I said, no, it's okay. I'm going to stay. I'm a little tired. I'm going to stay in. I'm, I'm going to just yeah. relax. But she says that she noticed it in my voice that something was wrong. 
I didn't want to worry her. I didn't say yeah. nothing. Yeah. She she left. It was uh, probably like, you know, they usually go up to about two or three o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That day she came right after I talk, spoke to her. And and the funny thing is that she walks into my bedroom. Uh -huh. I'm laying there. I'm feeling like crazy. I feel like I'm going crazy. I feel like something is now you add all the other symptoms that I've had. Now this is the rock bottom. Now I feel like my right. mind's I'm losing my mind. I I can't focus anymore. Yeah. Uh, everything's difficult and I started getting very emotional. It was the first time because I, I guess that what I was seeing it started getting to me like uh -huh. emotionally. And uh, my wife walks into my bedroom and she says, our bedroom, she says, what are, what's going on? Why did you want to go? Because, you know, people that know me, I'm a social being. Yes, I yes, people. I know. You, I, love, you, I, love, you love, I love people. You love a good chat. Yes, yes. I do. And so we're there, right? I mean, I'm, she comes in, she says, why don't you want to come to Panda? I said, and I couldn't answer, like, I couldn't give her a good answer to keep my cover. Right. You know what I'm saying? When you're still trying to cover your illness. Oh, yeah. You're yeah. like, what do I tell her? What do I tell her? Wow. And I'm fighting, what am I going to tell her? Wow. She goes, because uh, it was just, it was not me. She knew that it wasn't me. She goes, there's something wrong with you. This is not you. Mm -hmm. I started crying. And that's how I answered the question. Wow. From that day forward, she knew I was sick. I started wow. crying like a baby. I couldn't stop crying. Wow. Because I I felt like yes, I was losing who I was. Mm -hmm. I was losing my identity. I was I was no longer gonna be that person that I've always wanted to be. Mm -hmm. I want to be the best I can. I want to be uh, a provider for my family. I want to protect my wife. I want to be the best I can be in my business. Right. I could no longer do that. Wow. And it was falling apart before my eyes. I mean, before my mind. Right. right I could right. not grab it and put it back together. It was falling apart right before, right before me. Wow. You feel defenseless. And yet, everybody's cool. telling you, oh, it's all in the mind. You're gonna be all right. You're gonna be all right. Yeah, I wish I could just, it's been a year now that I've been carrying this. And it's only getting worse. Wow. And then you start like looking into, my wife started doing research, she's really good with research. She started doing research about depression or what was going right. on. We went to the doctor, that was on a Saturday, on Monday morning, I went to the doctor, I did an exam. And he confirmed that I was going through major depression. Yeah, clinical. Uh, clinical. Uh, very, he goes, it was really bad. Wow. Really, really bad. And this is where it went, went worse for me because uh, as we're talking again, I start crying in front of him because now I, I have this reality that I'm sick, but right. it's a horrible illness. I never thought that depression was that. Yeah. And I didn't understand how serious it was. And I think that's one of the things that people, and I hope that those of you uh, watching this understand that it is serious. You know, you have to get help. And we're going to talk yes. about that, you know, in, in our next installment of this series. But uh, that, I think this is like so important. And I thank you for emphasizing it. A lot of people don't understand. You know, a lot of people, you know, think that it's this. Oh, it's all in your head. Get over it. You know, you're so blessed. There's nothing for you to be Everybody just asking about. you, what's wrong, what's wrong with your life? Uh -huh. Why are you feeling like this? Yeah. Are you having problems with your wife? One day he said, are you being unfaithful to your wife? I said, no, uh -huh. I love my wife. Yeah. I have a beautiful wife. I don't need to be unfaithful to her. Yeah. No. Another man says, uh, hey, just get together, man. It's in the mind. You'll get, it'll, it'll, you'll get over it. Wow. I'm like, yeah, I know it's in the mind, but it's crazy. I can't get a grip of it. It's like, it's out of control. My thoughts were weird. They were getting weirder by the moment because the more you realize that you're in this it's like you feel trapped you feel like and it's, it's not a it's like an entrapment that you feel like there's no way out everywhere you look there's no way out you're not feeling any better and everything that you're doing seems to even get feel make you feel worse because now the focus is coming back on you all your family's getting you're seeing they're worried they're worried about you you see it in their in their face right the sadness the weariness it's like and that just piles oh up it just compiles the yeah. problem two or three times greater than what it already is. So now you're getting deeper and deeper into depression. Mm -hmm. And I hit rock bottom. When the, the study that they gave me, uh -huh. to figure out what, how bad my, my um, they, there's a test you can do yeah. to see how bad your depression is. Right. Well, the, the, the test that they did on me, uh, it's a very common uh, test. Uh, Dr. Nelly says it's, uh, the, it's an American uh, association. Psychiatric association. So, there you go. Thank you. Uh, and I took that test on both sides. On anxiety and depression, I was at the top. Wow. I mean, the highest you could score. Wow. And uh, you add that onto the problem, that starts stressing you out. Exactly. Like, again, because I'm going to stay like this. 
now you're thinking I should just maybe shoot myself. Wow. You know, but I'm not gonna do that because I what legacy am I gonna leave for my children? Right. My, but at that moment, and this is why so many people, you know, um, unfortunately commit suicide in you know during this the, the, this interaction with depression when they go you know when, when they start experiencing oh, yes. you know, all these symptoms they feel so out of control right okay so you go to the doctor and thank god you know um you your wife is with you you guys go to the doctor what happens then as uh he, they gave me the treatment right they gave me some pills first uh to try to and then an antidepressant mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. uh it went i had a lot of depression but when i took the pill some of the side effects was loss of appetite uh, I already had a little bit of that uh -huh. and now it's like I didn't want to eat anything oh, wow. in one week I lost like 10 pounds oh wow uh, I don't even remember how I got I real remember, thin I remember uh, yeah, I was pretty, like I wouldn't want I couldn't eat I had a knot in my stomach didn't want to be with my wife yeah uh, and oh now I couldn't sleep remember before I told you I was sleeping all the time yes well now I couldn't sleep I would sleep 45 minutes to an hour and a half max wow. the whole night with the meds with the meds those are my side effects i call the doctor and i tell him all my side effects oh and another one that i oh uh, the one that the worst my anxiety kit was At all off the high. charts yeah. never in my life i'd ever had anxiety like that wow. my heart was pounding right out of my chest wow. and i call the doctor and i say hey you know what i've had this since i took the pill these are my symptoms stop taking those pills immediately yeah, yeah. he gave me a second one a second, I remember the, the other one we took in. So I took it and uh, it got worse. Wow. All those symptoms, now I'm thinking, you know what, it's not worth living. I wish I could maybe like go for a jog and trip and fall in front of a truck, semi, wow. whatever, make wow. it look like an accident so my wife could pay, collect uh, uh, life insurance. Because, yeah. you know, I mean, I'm thinking about all these things. Right, I'm a thinker right, that I am. Right. I'm always thinking about what's going to happen next. What's the next right, right. thing? So, but my mind was limited in what it can and how there was. Oh, the worst. Another one that that really bothered me a lot is there was no longer hope. Mm. I did not see hope in the in, in the like in the long haul, like right, in the future. Right. For me, seeing a week ahead was like. It's hopeless. Why do I want to look at a week? At, why do I want to plan for a week? I can't even get through today. Wow. I can't even get through this hour. Mm -hmm. How am I supposed to think about a week, a, a month from now? And people are talking about, you know, agendas and, you know, people, yeah. are, you know, and I got a I have a business that people are talking to me about what we have to do. There was one day one of my workers calls me and says, hey, you know what? We have a broken pump over at this place that has a leak. It needs to be repaired right now. Mm -hmm. I started crying. I fixed pumps thousands of times. But you felt overwhelmed? I felt overwhelmed. Yeah. At the moment, I was like, really? You had to call me, the pump had a break right now? And you need to go, you need me to go right now? It was, it was, it just, all these things happening at once. Wow. It's, wow. it's the worst I've ever felt in all my life. Wow. I, I tell people when I share my, my, uh, my depression uh, experience, it's the worst chapter of my life ever. I can imagine. It's the worst. You feel trapped. I can't even imagine, but oh, it is the worst. Wow. When you're at that level, and and not going, and it's not going away. I, I went through it for a good year. So before we close this part off, because you know, stay tuned in our next installment. Um, she's going to be talking to us about everything that he did to help himself, and and I think that's one of the, you know, I mean, this every part is valuable, but I think people are definitely going to. Uh, benefit from listening what what you as an individual started doing but um, one thing that you want to you know to close this part off uh, what is the most important thing that you want people to to know it's not the end of the world it's not worth suicide it's not worth uh, keeping it to yourself it's very important to seek help okay that's Again, that's for me that's what I had to do and not be embarrassed. Not be as men, we're shy about it, we're, we're worried about what people, other men or people are gonna think of us, so be it. Wow. They don't think whatever they wanna think, you go do what you gotta do. Wow. And, and you, you will get it back. You will get, I, I, I'm, my wife would tell you, she thinks that she's a lot better now than before. <laughs> and I praise God for that. Yes. Because I realized that I was carrying depression, didn't know I was carrying an illness. Yeah. And so once you fix the illness, you slowly but surely start getting back who you are. Yeah. 
Yeah. So wow. Don't don't ever quit on it. It's not worth a as they say, what is a long term not not a, a short term answer to a that's okay. Uh, I'm sorry. I got, I, I I'm know. To... I, there's so much to talk yeah, about, but... and I know that we, we, we have so much to talk about. We're going to be you know, um, sharing all this stuff with you, and we just want to invite you to continue uh, watch the second part. It will be airing the following week after this one. Um, we, I personally want to just say thank you. There's no other words. I mean, my heart is full of gratitude oh, because you, I know I, I, I'm married to a man. I have two male um, offspring, you know, I mean, I, I, I really feel for the, the, the male population of this world because you tend to be told that you can't share your emotions. And for a man to say, you know what, no, this is, this is what I experienced, this is what, what I went through. Uh, for the benefit, if you're a, a man, we're hoping that you will be reassured that you can find help when you're feeling, you know, um, the what clinical depression is um, for women for any males that will, that are in your life hopefully you will have an understanding um, heart and mind to be there for the support that they need um, thank you so with much that, let me, yes uh, I couldn't have done this without my wife I want to mm -hmm. also say that and without my wife wife I wouldn't have done this so for the wives out there uh, your, your your man is probably not the one that you met and fell in love with, but be patient. My wife did a remarkable job of it. Wow. The way she went about it, I know that she was worried. I know that she even lost a lot of weight. She ran our business during that time. She did things that I'm so grateful for. Yeah. I've never ever can repay her for what she went through uh, for me. And uh, just for the, like again, for the women out there, don't lose hope. Seek help yes. and you will get through. Yes. Wow. And we'll end it with that, not without reminding you to elevate your frequency so you can live. I'm Teresa Alvarez-Diaz with MrsDiazTalks.com, inviting you to uh, subscribe to our channel, like this video, and stay tuned for our part four of our special interview in this Unfamous Human series with Isidro Chilo Sicaios. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. What a blessing. Thank you. And we will see you guys next week. Blessings.